80% of the time we can determine an orchid that doesn't have a label in it as coming from a specific alliance, be it the Oncidium or Catley alliance to mention two. But I don't want to take it for granted that somebody that gets an orchid or buys one off the sales table that is struggling without a label in it knows their orchid anatomy straight out of the gate. Many times somebody might say, oh, I'm going to try and grow orchids and they'll start with some of ones on the sales table just to save some money because it's a great way to learn and get into the hobby without breaking the bank and possibly losing orchids that were pretty expensive. Anyway, beyond what we can determine as far as the anatomy of the orchid is concerned, we have no idea how to take care of this unlabeled orchid. What we are going to discuss in this video is how to determine the basic care of an orchid by focusing on its root system. This way we can work towards reviving the orchid because usually orchids that come to our collection and we don't know exactly what care requirements they have, those are orchids from sales tables or friends that got one as a gift but are not growers themselves. They know you do and they plonk an orchid in your lap. Now if you're here specifically because you were gifted an orchid and have no idea what to do with it, then you've come to the right video. Because no matter what you don't know about your new orchid, the roots are going to tell you everything you need to know and how to proceed on a positive note. If this video however prompts any further questions about your orchid, I invite you to take advantage of the comments section where we can dive into specifics. The information in this video will also cover what you can expect in the future care of your orchid based on a dead root system because let's face it, many times these kinds of orchids come to us with a dead root system. But we are going to take whatever is not viable and make it work in our favor when the orchid starts a new root system. We can do a lot of deductions just by seeing what the dead root system even looks like. It will also equip you to be ready and informed for when the new root system either grows or some of the leftover viable roots start to branch. I have other videos I can provide you links for, which if you're interested in them, I will link in my reply to your comment. Just let me know. So viable or not, let's talk about the most important thing about the root system our unlabeled orchid came with. How much water does your mystery orchid need? Keep in mind, the key is how much of the cortex does the individual root have. The general rule of thumb is the following. Fine rooted orchids, no matter what the genus, require a lot more water. So what you want to do with those orchids is ensure that the roots always have access to water. The concept of a wet dry cycle in this instance is to just barely let the media dry out before watering again. Orchids with fine roots do not like a hard dry cycle, unless we discuss the ins and outs of dendrobiums and what time of year it is. But for the purposes of this video, we're just going to stick with the ideal watering requirement no matter the time of year. So for fine-rooted orchids, do not let the media dry out completely over an extended period of time, meaning for more than three days if you're dealing with a fine-rooted orchid. Many fine-rooted orchids have a branching root system and we want to encourage that by providing enough water. The reason being, they do not have a generous cortex covering the steely. For that reason, the storage capacity of the fine roots is limited and needs replenishing on a regular basis to survive. Survive. When it comes to medium-sized roots, you can be a little less generous with the watering. While they like a lot of water as well, they do not mind going without water for more than three days. The reason being, they have a little more cortex to work with to cover the periods of drought. Drought being, not having access to water all the time. I hope you can see a pattern emerging with what you're looking at when it comes to the root size. And if you have had a light bulb moment at this stage, please give this video a thumbs up. A subscribe to the channel would also be appreciated. And the hat trick of hat tricks for YouTube and the algorithm would be if you could also share this video out. Thank you so much for that additional support. It means a lot. Now, if we were to be on the patio together, I would ask you to answer the following question about roots that are thicker, larger in their circumference. How regular access to water do these kinds of roots need? I know what you're going to say, and you are right. They can tolerate a longer period of drought than any other roots. If you receive an orchid that has nice chunky roots, you can water these kinds of orchids once the media has completely dried out. For example, next day your pot is dry, and then even up to a week beyond that to ensure that they don't rot out on you. Remember, it is often that we get orchids like these and they are in dire straits. 
if you're uncomfortable with not watering an orchid in that state for so long and want to initiate a faster recovery, you may not be doing the orchid any favors by not letting the root system dry out for too long, with the exception of the fine-rooted orchids, of course. The reason being, the belayman is not able to cope with the additional water it suddenly has access to and could potentially rot out. To be on the safer side, hold off on watering and watch your orchid see how it responds. Your mystery orchid may take a while to show signs of recovery, which is normal because orchids are slow to respond. So please do not take your revival efforts as it's not working by adding more water. It may take up to two weeks before you see any shriveled structures plump up. The fact that your mystery orchid is getting water is already more than it had before. Now we have one more root structure yet to cover and those are the teddy bear style roots that have so much fuzz from start to finish. <laughs> From the outside, they do not resemble any other orchid root we have covered so far. Even if this kind of root system is not viable anymore, you can still see the fuzziness and that is your sign that you're dealing with a terrestrial or semi-terrestrial orchid. Now, hopefully you have something to work with and not the entire root system has suffered, so we're going to think positively and say that you have some viable roots. These kinds of orchids love water, doesn't matter their size, fine medium chunky they love it so much that they need it they need it fresh and pure and with little to no fertilizer the best course of action for orchids that come with roots like these is to flush the pot daily this way oxygen gets pulled into the pot along with the oxygen in the water it is a double boost for terrestrial and semi-terrestrial orchid roots and the recovery in this instance may be painfully slow but on some of these orchids the recovery is really fast just keep at it and you will be doing your new orchid a huge favor. One final little detail that you can also take into consideration and see how it applies to orchids you already have, if you have other orchids, is to see what their root systems look like, how much water they are demanding from you, and transfer that experience to your mystery orchid. Because if you have other orchids with similar root size and structure, they are already responding to your environment and they will be able to provide you with a blueprint. But I hope that what I mentioned earlier is helpful to anyone that has been gifted an orchid and doesn't exactly know what to do next with regards to how much water especially if it's a struggling orchid now for root geeks out there like me i also take a look at how thick or thin the velamen is around the cortex velamen is not the same for all orchids some roots have a tougher thicker velamen while others have a thinner one which is easily recognized as to how quickly the root greens or browns up depending on the anthocyanin in the root system orchid roots take up to 15 seconds to completely saturate but some take as long as 15 seconds to do so while others seem to color up even faster if you see some coloring up fast that is your indicator that the velamen is thin meaning it is comprised of less layers the ones that take up to 15 seconds have a thicker velamen meaning it is comprised of a lot more layers and please remember that if your mystery orchid comes with new roots that many new orchid roots do not absorb any water they will not not color up when water is administered to them so they are not your go-to for how long a root system is saturated always use older more established roots as your margin and don't try and force new roots to absorb water they will eventually do so but in their own time i hope that this was helpful i appreciate your time watching and thank you for being here have yourself a fabulous day on the condition that you stay safe take care bye